As, as usual, let me begin with the key messages that um, we, we are giving through this forecast. Uh, first, the EU economy is at a turning point. After a surprisingly strong first half of the year, uh, the EU economy lost momentum in the third quarter, and recent survey data point to a contraction for the winter. The outlook for next year has weakened significantly, and we now forecast the EU economy to grow by only 0.3% in 23 before a progressive recovery to 1.6% in 2024. Second, uh, inflation uh, has continued to uh, rise faster than expected, but we believe that the peak is near, most likely at the end of this year. We project headline inflation to reach 9.3 in the EU and 8.5% in the euro area, and to decelerate only mildly next year to 7 and 6.1% before coming down more forcefully in 2024. Third, the EU labour market remains the bright spot of the EU economy and is expected to show uh, again resilience. The increase in unemployment next year is projected to be moderate, before falling again in 24. Fourth, we project government deficits to remain above 3%, but debt ratios to continue declining from 4.6%, that was the deficit in 2021, deficit should reach 3.4 this year, 3.6 next year, and 3.2 in 2024. The aggregate debt to GDP ratio is projected to fall from 89.4%, which was the figure in 2021, to 84.1 in 2024. So from 89 to 84 uh, in, in the period 21-24. Fifth, uh, main message, uncertainty, as always, remains exceptionally high with predominantly downside risks. Our forecast baseline is yet again underpinned by some crucial working assumption that I want to uh, stress in particular. It is assumed that geopolitical tensions will neither normalize nor escalate before the end of the forecast horizon, and all adopted sanctions against Russia will remain in place. This is an assumption of the forecast. Second assumption, continuation of demand reduction and supply diversification will ensure that the EU economy avoids major gas shortages over the forecast horizon. And final assumption is that monetary policy tightening is assumed to continue without inducing disorderly adjustments in financial markets. So, as far as the growth is concerned, real GDP growth in the first half of the year surprised on the upside. GDP increased at a quarterly rate of 0.7% in both the first and the second the expansion continued at a weaker pace of 0.2% in the third quarter. But the forces driving the post-pandemic expansion have now largely faded away. And the shocks unleashed by the war and the broad-based slowdown in external demand are taking the upper end. As inflation has continued to surprise on the upside, the sharp erosion of purchasing power has shifted consumer sentiment dramatically. Confidence plunged also in the business sector amid high production costs, remaining supply bottlenecks, tighter financing condition, and heightened uncertainty. So we expect the EU economy to contract in both the current quarter and the first quarter of 2023. This technical recession 
is said to be broad-based across demand components, but also across countries, with a majority of member states experiencing two consecutive quarters of contraction. Energy prices, after soaring to unprecedented level in late summer, wholesale prices of gas and electricity in the EU have come down significantly in recent weeks. This reflects the successful filling of storage tanks and possibly the recent mild temperature. Future prices for 23 and 24 have declined as well. Current gas storage levels appear sufficient to allow our economies to throw this winter, but the near absence of Russian gas and difficulty in further expanding LNG imports, also considering infrastructure bottlenecks, will make refilling storages ahead of next winter, I mean 23-24 winter, more challenging. And electricity prices remain highly correlated with gas. Inflation has kept outpacing wage growth. High inflation is eroding the purchasing power of disposal incomes of households, but also the real value of their wealth. Growth in the volume of private consumption is thus, thus projected to decelerate sharply from 3.7% in 2022 to 0.1% in 2023, before picking up to 1.5% in 24. This is the decline in private consumption. Investment is also projected to continue to grow, albeit at a more subdued pace next year, under the impact of higher input and labor costs, coupled with rising borrowing costs. These adverse developments are partially mitigated by continued implementation of recovery and resilience facility, which is set to sustain public investment, markedly so in some countries. Finally, weakness in the EU external environment is expected to persist, providing little support over the forecast horizon. All in all, EU GDP growth is expected at 3.3% this year, thanks to a significant carryover from 21, and, as I said before, a strong first half of the year. The upward revision from the summer forecast should not distract for the main, from the main message. The economic situation has deteriorated markedly, and we are heading into two quarters of contraction. And by the way, this shows that our decision to extend the general escape clause to 2023 was warranted. Economic activity is expected to stabilize in spring next year, before starting to regain some strength on the back of progressively easing inflation, increasing households' disposable income, and abating supply disruptions. But the rebound is said to be subdued as uncertainty remains high. The negative shock from energy market developments lingers, monetary policy tightens, and external demand recovers only mildly. For 2023 as a whole, this forecast projects real GDP growth in both EU and Euro area at 0.3%. In 2024, growth is set to progressively regain traction, averaging respectively 1.6 and 1.5 in the EU and in the Euro area. What is the map of this uh, growth for 22 and 23? All the EU economies are expected to continue growing in 22 this year then experience a marked slowdown of activity next year before seeing a pickup in 2024. And this is for all member states. Preliminary data indicate that some member states already registered a contraction in GDP in the third quarter of this year, and most EU economies are set to see one contraction in the current quarter. 
the main economies in Germany, soaring energy costs are a major drag on income and output growth, together with costier borrowing, this is likely to weigh on investment. Further losses in purchasing power amid high inflation are expected to curtail private consumption despite partial relief from policy support. So GDP is forecast to grow by 1.6% this year, but declined by 0.6% in 2023, before recovering by 1.4 in 2024. In France, economic activity is expected to remain subdued over the first half of 23. In the second half of next year, the projected moderation of inflation is set to allow for a gradual recovery, with private consumption gaining momentum and investment growing again. So real GDP in France is forecast to grow by 26 this year by 0.4 in 2023 and by 1.5 in 2024. In Italy, the energy price shock and the worsening external outlook are taking their toll. Thanks to solid growth in the first three quarters of the year, real GDP growth is forecast at 3.8 this year. In 2023, Consumer spending is likely to stagnate, while high input costs, tightening financing conditions and slowing demand are projected to dampen corporate investment. Accordingly, GDP growth is set to slow down from the 3.8 of 22 to 0 0.3 in 23, before picking up to 1.1 in 24. Spain. Spain is forecast to see a deceleration of growth next year. Pressures stemming from high energy prices are expected to partially ease from mid-2023, enabling a gradual pickup in activity on the back of the moderate revival of private consumption and a further normalization of tourism. This expansion is projected to be more robust in 2024, also on the back of invigorated domestic and external demand. So real GDP uh, is projected to grow 4.5% this year before easing to 1% in 23 and edging up to 2% in 24. Lastly, in Poland, economic growth is set to decelerate visibly in 23 and 24 and become negative at the beginning of 23. After strong growth in 22, the weakening is due to increased uncertainty, a tightening on financing condition, and the economy's adjustment to higher commodity prices. Overall, the forecast is to grow by 4% this year, 0 0.7 in 23 and 2.6 in 24. Inflation. Energy inflation is expected to keep increasing until year-end, before starting to decline next year. Headline inflation for this year is now projected at a rate of 9.3 in the EU and 8.5 in the euro area. It is expected to gradually decelerate next year to 7% in the EU and 6.1 in the euro area, only in 2024, inflation is expected to moderate more significantly to 3% in the EU and 26 in the euro area. The broadening of inflationary pressures suggests that core inflation is set to peak only in the first quarter of 23 and abate very slowly thereafter. So core inflation is projected to settle above headline inflation for most of 2024. The impact of adopted or planned fiscal energy measure adds uncertainty to the forecast for energy inflation. And the inflation map shows um, a lot of difference among member states. In 2022, inflation is expected to range from 5.8 in France to 19.1 in Estonia. 
next year from 3.7 in Denmark to 15.7 in Hungary. As is evident from the map, there is a strong geopolitical pattern to intra-EU inflation differential, namely Central and Eastern Europe ranks visibly higher than the rest of the EU, both in 22 and 23. The labor market is still very strong, the strongest labor market in decades. Unemployment rates are at record low and participation and employment rates at high. What is more, vacancy rates and reported labor shortages remain extremely elevated, though they have started declining. Our analysis suggests that as demand weakens and even contracts, the number of vacancies and labor shortages will abate significantly before unemployment starts increasing again. Labor markets are therefore expected to remain strong as employment growth is likely to react to the slowing of economic activity with a lag. The unemployment rate is projected to increase only marginally from 6.2 in 22 to 6.5 in 23 before falling again to 6.4 in 2024. Wage growth increased to above average rates in 2022 and is expected to remain strong, but to compensate for lost purchasing power only partially. In other words, we do not yet see significant feedback loops between wages and inflation. The trade balance. The current account surplus is projected to shrink from 3.1 to 2.1 in 2022, recovering somewhat in the next years. Despite a fairly good performance in goods exports, the strong surge in import price dominates, turning the EU large surplus of the trade balance into a small deficit in 2022. Next year, the balance is projected to be less negative while in 24 it would turn mildly positive. In contrast to goods, the balance of services is projected to increase this year thanks to the substantial rebound of the tourism industry. And here a weaker euro is of help, of course. Deficits. The expansion in the first nine months of the year and the phasing out of pandemic-related measures is driving a further reduction in deficits this year. Despite new measures to mitigate the impact of energy prices on households and firms, so the general government deficit is forecast to fall from 4.6 in 21 to 3.4 this year. As the economy weakens, the deficit is expected to increase again to 3.6 of GDP next year. But in line with the Commission's no policy change assumption, these projections take into account only measures credibly announced and specified in sufficient detail by the cutoff date. Importantly, at the cutoff date, which was at the end of October, some member states had not yet announced which energy measures they planned for 23. Moreover, while several energy measures are planned to expire in the course of 23, with energy prices set to remain high, member states may, of course, prolong existing measures or implement new ones. As such, the budgetary cost of energy measures in 23 may be higher than expected, and the budgetary deficit, in consequence, underestimated. The additional cost related to measures to mitigate the impact of high energy prices are currently estimated to have a net impact of 1.2% of GDP this year and 0.9% next year. 
In a stylized exercise, Commission services estimated that if energy measures had to be kept in place for the full year 2023, their total net cost could increase by an additional 1% of GDP in both the EU and the euro area, reaching close to 2% of GDP in 2023. So we are now forecasting 0.9, but in this stylized scenario, it could reach 2%, the additional um, spending uh, related to GDP for energy measures, if they uh, become permanent or if you have new non-announced measures. In 2024, the deficit is forecast to fall again to 3.2 of GDP, thanks to the projected resumption of economic activity and the, in the assumed absence of energy-related measures in 2024. The number of countries with a deficit exceeding 3% of GDP is set to remain at 15 this year. This number is expected to increase to 16 in 2023 before falling again to 11 in 2024 based on unchanged policies. Overall, these developments imply a supportive stance in 22 and 23, followed by normalization in 24. Inflation should mechanically support a further reduction of the debt throughout the forecast horizon through the denominator effect. The debt-to-GDP ratio for the EU as whole is set to decline to 84.1% in 2024, yet over the longer term, high inflation, especially if imported, is bound to negatively affect the public finances as well. Risks, which is always the last part and not always the, the uh, better part of our forecast. Um, and you, you, are not, you may be not surprised that risks are tilted to the downside um, because of the extraordinary uncertainty, the potential for further economic disruption due to the Russia's war is far from exhausted. The largest threat comes from adverse developments on the gas market and the risk of shortages, especially not this winter, but next winter. Beyond our baseline scenario, the Commission provided an additional estimate on the economic costs of a complete stop of gas flows from Russia compounded by insufficient gas consumption savings and cold winters, these costs would be sizable. They could be mitigated if we continue to increase gas imports from other non-Russia suppliers to prepare for the next winter. However, if we fail to prepare for a high demand season in advance, economic costs could be somewhat higher in 2023 and markedly higher in 2024. And inflation could increase by an additional two percentage point in 2024 compared to our baseline. If this scenario of completely uh, cut of Russian gas will materialize. And finally, rising borrowing costs compounded by strongly rising production costs at a time when demand cools, amplify pre-existing financial vulnerabilities in the corporate sector. And renewed stress in financial markets may also emerge in response to a worsened profit outlook for firms and the general context of higher interest rates. So we, these are the, the risks we are approaching, so, a, at the end of a year marked by the return of war in our continent, a brutal war of aggression for which Russia alone is responsible. But in spite of this major shock in the first months of the year, 
growth was markedly stronger than analysts expected in the both first and second quarters, and even in the third quarter. So our economies have shown great resilience, thanks in no small part to the bold decisions taken over the past couple of years in a spirit of unity and solidarity. These decisions have supported both the labor market and investment. But inevitably, the impact of soaring energy prices, rampant inflation, are now taking their toll. And we have some difficult months ahead of us. I have highlighted the many risks surrounding. So let me conclude by telling you that if we, as Europeans, can remain united, we will be able to successfully navigate also this challenging period, making it short and emerge stronger from it. In sum, I want to say that the economic prospects are not only subject to huge uncertainty, but are crucially policy dependent. If you are able to show, based also on the experience of the pandemic, that we are able to agree on a common policy strategy, this will have confidence effect on markets and investors and may change the outlook for the better. In this sense, I believe that also a rapid convergence of the new proposals by the Commission on the reform of our economic governance could be key in giving this positive contribution. Well, thank you. We were a little bit long, maybe, uh, but now I'm here for your questions.